First time on Collider Live, but not first time uh, with me. Adi Shankar is here. Hello, Adi. How you doing, man? Good. Good? Real good, good yeah. or just a little good? What kind of mood? You were sick last time we talked. That's why I asked you. I'm, I'm better. I started, better. Uh, yeah, I started <laughs> meditating. You did? Yeah. Everybody's meditating. So our mutual friend Katie Sackoff is a big meditator mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when it's very when did, trendy. It is though. When did you start? When did you start doing that? And what, what led to it? Um, I, I just realized like I had a problem. Yeah. Like I was a, effectively a workaholic, but I didn't look at that way because what I do is fun. Mm -hmm. So I just kept kept down on this on this path of of like lacking balance. Um, and then in December, I just went to a uh, a village in India. Wow. Well, I hadn't been back to India in, in a while, yeah. right? And that's when it just kind of dawned on me that, like, I moved here at 16, and I was so terrified because two days later, uh, I moved here by myself at 16, like, without my family. Didn't know anybody. Right. And two days later, 9-11 happened. Oh, shit. And I was right, right, so right. terrified that that I wouldn't fit in, that I would, you know, like, be be looked at as, as a terrorist, effectively. And this was a narrative that was in my head, right? Did you so get no any of that? Not really, Good. not really. But Good. in my in my mind, I was in my mind. I, you know, you you interpret a, a look. Um, sure. I was uh, wondering if what people are thinking about you, even though they might be thinking something. Completely Absolutely. Different, right? Like this accent I use is a construct. I made this up when I moved here. This is not my real accent. I don't talk to my parents this way. What do you right. sound like? Uh, when I talk to my parents, I talk to them like this. But then I came here, and I'm like, dude, I need to need to assimilate. I want to like you know like um, fit in. So uh, when I went to India, it kind of deconstructed a lot of that. I, I got back in touch with my roots and. Um, and I realized like certain behavior patterns that I have are very destructive. Mm -hmm. For instance, uh, I wake up in the morning, first thing I do is I check my phone. First thing a lot of us probably do. Yeah. Right, disaster. Now first thing in the morning, I, I meditate for 10 minutes. I just do 10 minutes of deep breathing. I, I'm appreciative of my surroundings. It kind of zaps me out of this fight or flight mode that I've been kind of like, you know, living in like from one obstacle to the another, to another. Um, and, it's, and you found it it's helped Dramatically. Drastically. Yeah. I mean, I'm like way more like present. Good. Do you guys ever use like the Headspace app? No. Have you heard of that? I've no. heard of it. I've used, I've used that. The one yeah. with the sounds? Yeah. Well, that's good. Well, it's like, that's like a guy with a very soothing voice. Would, yeah. Yeah. Would you say so? And, and the answer to this question might be no, but did you, have you ever f um, suffered or been uh, as far as depression goes? Oh, absolutely. Okay. And, absolutely. You, and you feel the meditation has helped with that as yeah. well? Yeah. 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 I love I've, you to death. You got to stop breathing into the mic. You kill me. Yeah. No, I've had to, uh, <laughs> I've had to, I've had to go on meds, med medication for it twice for depression. Okay. And, twice. and yeah, so, yeah. And, and with the medication, does it, uh, so sorry, with the meditation, does that also help? Or do you still need to be on the medication? As no, well? no, 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 no. It's, 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 see, it's all under control, right? Like, um, it's like I just didn't have a skill set on how to how to navigate my own thought process. Sure. Um, and now now you do. Yeah. Now I now I do. I have tools. Obviously, yeah. I'm not perfect. I need to get better at it, right? But um, that self self care, which sounds a little hokey, but but it's but it's true. I mean, dude, I've been like suicidal a few times, yeah. and I don't like admit. I, I like I would never have admitted that. Uh, until like super recently, well, that, and that's and that's helpful in the fact that like once again, because now do you find that when you when you're meditating and because you're able to do that because you're able to say it out loud because I think that what I found in this space uh, alone because of all the personalities dealt with um, a lot of people that I work work with worked with that I know suffer from depression have had suicidal thoughts and it's like when you and when you're able to like you said put it out there put it at the forefront. Not attack it. I don't want to use that word, but you know what I mean. Like just uh, face it head on. I don't. Yeah, word. I don't like the way I look. Yeah. I feel like I talk weird. I take these long pauses, and I do that because I'm speaking in an accent that I've like con constructed. I'm like this whole persona is kind of. I just thought it was because you were thoughtful. <laughs> well, that too. That's definitely that's definitely a part of it. That's right. definitely a part of it, Jeff. But but there's certain uh, nuance that I've incorporated into into this manner of speaking, which is a lot, which is very colloquial, mm -hmm. right? Um, and that 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 is kind of designed to disarm, because people in India speak more formally because it's it's it had that British colonial influence, um, 
I yeah, and I sprinkle in like a well, lot. Well, what does your that reason. what's your yeah. family think about the accents? I think because the reason I bring this up, I just so I just watched Bohemian Rhapsody. Mm -hmm. And you look at Freddie Mercury, and and obviously not his not his name, and and from where he came from, his whole culture, and and they they tackle inside of the movie of how that went over with his family and right. relationship. What's your relationship with your family? And how do they feel about you know the the accent? It's been the accent's been around. The new accent's been around for a little bit now. But were they accepting of it? Did they understand? Well, I think I think. Uh, um, just the Indian Indian culture, Indian society, right? Like, again, it was a British colony not not too long ago, right? Uh, India has been routinely invaded by by uh, by outsiders, so so there's a there's an element where, like, if you go out and you assimilate, that's that's considered a good thing. Yeah, it's considered a good thing. It's not, you know, it's it's not uh, in certain other cultures, especially here, especially now that we've. We've we've kind of moved in this era of like intense tribalism, mm -hmm. where all of a sudden, if you're not you know repping your block the right way, uh, you're like a traitor. That doesn't really exist in our in our community the same way, right? Yeah. It's like you have to still be proud of being Indian, but we, you know, um, shifting, yeah, shifting, it, absolutely. I understand. So would absolutely. you say they're they're proud that you fit in, or however you want to describe it, shifted. Yes. Is it tough? I mean, this is well. Okay, so this is like a film podcast, so I don't know how it's not. deep I should <laughs> go in this. this. I mean, do you actually, do you actually well, want to know the real yeah, answer? Yeah, yeah, I really want to know. Okay. So, we, so we, I want to give you a breakdown that before yeah. hold the answer because this is not a film pa podcast. So yeah. Clyde Alive is for exactly what what we're talking about here. Clyde Alive is for that. If it goes off into, I mean, I want to talk to you about your show. I don't want to right. talk about you everything that's going on. We'll get to that. But this is about everything. Joe, what's on your mind? Okay. So here's what happened. Um, uh, I had a miserable time in high school. I felt bullied. I, you know, again, moved here. Two days later, 9-11 happened. It was, you know, I, I was the only person that looked like me. I immediately felt like an outcast and felt like the school was against me, right? So you so were I, in high school in America. Yes, I moved here when I was 16, so right. junior and senior year, which is already very tough. It's tough, yeah. Right? Uh, and then also the, the culture shock, everything. And the internet didn't exist in right. the same context where it did, does today. So there wasn't a, a way to really just go and look it up. Like, okay, this is... This is the culture. This is the, the the the. This is how people dress, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So um, I, I kind of held this weird resentment towards this 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 school. Uh, and my 15 year uh, reunion was was this was like in May. Okay. And I was just kind of like, oh, you know, f that place. I had this still this lingering resentment, which didn't really make any sense. Um, the school actually reached out to me. The high school reached out to me um, to speak to the students. They mm -hmm. were like, hey, are you coming to this reunion? Because we would love to love to have oh, you well. speak to the students. So now it's kind of like my, my immediately where my mind went was like, oh, yeah, this is just going to be just like get out. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, right. I know what you're pulling. Right. Like that's where my mind went. Um, okay. But uh, there's two other things that happened that day. One, uh, I was working on like a – like kind of a deal with a big company, and I got an email that same day uh, saying, um, hey, we're, we're moving forward with the deal. Mm -hmm. And the other big thing that happened that day was Kanye West called me. Okay. Uh, to just, like, collaborate. and Out of the blue. Out of the blue. He liked your style. Yeah. yeah you yeah. guys are both individuals. Right. Right. So that was so, – so all of a sudden it's like that three thing. All of a sudden I was like, okay, this is the universe telling me – and obviously now I'm in the meditation mode and everything. So this is the universe telling me to like deal with this. Mm -hmm. um, so I went to the reunion. I, I, I walked in with kind of walls up, a little like on, on edge, on guard. I walked out realizing my narrative was completely wrong. First mm -hmm. of all, the kids in the school thought I was really cool. <laughs> right. They all just thought I was really cool like when I was there. So you never officially got bullied. You just felt you did? I was misunderstood. Understood. Okay. But everyone was like, "Yeah, you were just like we all thought you were just really like smart." Right. Like you were just like a really smart dude who had like all this like world experience. So it blew your mind when you were at this. this oh, this absolutely. Right. And um, this is at the reunion. The kids that you had gone to school with are saying right, this to you. Right. And they were all like coming up to me because, I mean, part of it was, um, I mean, I guess it'd been out there that I'd like done film stuff. I don't think it was so much that. 
um, just kids were just like sharing their stories. Like one guy was like, you know, I, uh, I was like, how did you feel? And he's like, I, I hated it. I was like, why? And he said, well, I, I was too tall. I felt too tall. I felt like everyone was making fun of me for being mm. too tall. And I said, being too tall, dude, my like survival <laughs> mechanism is find the tallest person in the room and befriend that dude. Right. Yeah, since when, when is the height, height a bad thing? Well, but I think uh, like point, an, point is the fact that everybody had their, had their thing. Exactly. Yeah. And I realized that what I thought was an isolated experience was just teenage angst. Right. That's just what it was, right? Another kid who, who you know, was like, a, like top of the class, like everyone loved this guy, super social athlete. I was like, hey, did you have a good time? And he said, no. I said, why not? And he said, because I was in the closet the whole time and I was terrified people would find out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was like, whoa, you were living. Yo, okay. That, th okay. My narrative needs to needs to change. Um, the other thing that happened was that week. So like, literally the reunion was on, like I left like on a Thursday. On Monday, Kanye shot a video of me talking in my real accent. Oh, and he like posted it. Wait, were you cool with that, or you were not cool with that? Yeah, no, I was, oh, okay. I was cool with it because okay. he was like, he was like, yo, look, you know, he was doing his thing, and and um, so I think like a lot of people, pe a lot of people saw that and and realized. Actually, I don't know. I'm, I'm now, now this is me maybe projecting, but that was also happening in the ether. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't, you know, I don't talk to my parents very much about some of the stuff that goes on in my career because I don't, I just don't have the the framework. But I remember to. Bring it a full circle to how do my parents feel about it? Mm -hmm. I was I was at the hotel, you know, waiting to go for the first thing for the for the reunion, and my mom called me and my dad. They were both on speaker, and they were like, "We're very proud of you for what you just did." And I'm like, "What did I just do?" And they're like, "This." Um, I tied it into um, uh, the the character of Apu mm -hmm. from The Simpsons yeah, and yeah. how it how it made me feel yeah. and it was just it was just it wasn't like me bashing the character or anything like that I was just saying look this is this was my experience yeah I felt uh, were you talking about the screenwriting contest that that's what they were proud of you for doing or no, the no, whole no. the whole thing the screenwriting yeah. contest okay. the fact that like I literally just went out there and you know uh, um, um, started talking in in my real accent so um, they saw Kanye's video. And that's when they and the it. entire, you know, because uh, this became like international news in India, for yeah. instance, right? Like all the all the newspapers in India were writing about this, um, and uh, and yeah, like was it one of those things where it just like that? You know, it doesn't. It seems like you have a pretty good relationship with your parents. Oh yeah, and great relationship. So, with but, them, yeah. it's, but it always, no matter who you are, it's like you, the second you hear your parents say we're proud of you, it's like it gives you that. It gives you another boost. It gives you another boost, and there you are doing all this stuff too for your culture, for your in, your inner workings. I thought from what you, I think it's an inspiring tale for anybody when you for that high school thing. You see it one way, you perceive it one way. It's completely different. But not only do you say, okay, my narrative has changed, but I, you also have the courage to talk to other people throughout there too to get their their. So now, as a producer, do you then start to take that stuff? Do you start? Do you formulate any stories? Well, okay, so my this is where I'm kind of a hypocrite. Yeah. Because I've always operated with the following philosophy. I think just maybe this transition, you know, and there was a lot that went into me moving to America by myself at 16. Like my father lost his job. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, it was just, I, there was just a lot of turmoil going on in the home front, right? Uh, nothing bad, but as a kid, you know, it's a little, little unnerving. Um, this is where I'm a hypocrite. I've always operated on the, under the assumption that your life is literally just a kaleidoscope of sounds and images. Mm -hmm. And then you are taking those sounds and images and constructing a narrative around it. You're basically the narrator narrating the story of your life using this kaleidoscope of sounds and images that, you know, some of them are real. Some of them are just kind of snapshots. Some of them are, are, are just kind of recontextualized based off of the, the, the falsity of one's memory. Mm -hmm. And um, if you are unhappy with the narrative, you're unhappy with, you know, certain things trigger you the wrong way, then maybe look back, course correct the narrative because you attract whatever you put out, you attract whatever you feel. I believe that. I did not practice that here because the pain was so deep-rooted. Right. Makes sense. Um, I did not come on here to talk about this, by the way. Well, this is crazy. Yeah. That's maybe what, I just like like you. Yeah. Just, that's what we do. Yeah. That's what we do. But, look, <laughs> but, but, but I think it all plays into what we are here to talk about. And I think because here's another thing. We started off this whole conversation with meditation. We yes. talked about that. I'm sure that that had something to do with the fact that the way you approach that high school uh, reunion as well, too. So how does it 
you know, we talked about personal life, we talked about family life. How does it relate into your work? How does it relate into? We got season two here now. Okay, yeah. I remember that we were well, last time we talked. We were hoping that we we're going to get to two. We get to two. Yeah, we get to season two. As it just just came out. Mm-hmm. Um, how are we feeling about that? How what what are we what do we need to know about Castlevania season two and how you approach season two as a producer? Uh, season two was it, it was just better than season one okay. um, for <laughs> for a few reasons. Uh, one one you know actually like we talked about this last time I was mm-hmm. on uh, creating the production pipeline to pull off a show like this because um, there was no blueprint. We had to develop it. You know we we didn't want to do that. 3D CGI look. We wanted to replicate that hand-drawn uh, OVA 90s anime, 80s, 90s anime feel. And, like, it's hard to pull that off without without the appropriate team and without the workflow. So this is literally an international team of artists that, that we had to put together yeah. in order to execute it. Um, so season one was, was constructing the arc. Season two was, like, Perfecting the machinery, mm-hmm. so to speak. So that was that was great, very gratifying. Um, Do you get a bigger budget for season two after the first season is, is a success? Oh wow, Jeff Snyder with the <laughs> with, the, the, with the, big, the big question with the the, with the the like the yeah. That makes um, sense. I mean, because it, you know it's it's got it's got a fan base now too. Is it season two? You'd assume. I mean, uh, the answer is no. Oh, really? okay. and here's why: uh, we basically jumped right into it, right? Because. Um, we, like we, they uh, Netflix announced season two before season one even came out, I right? See. So it was like, okay, the the you know people are digging just the trailer alone, so so go, right? So it was more of an it was still an unknown quantity. When I went into uh, uh, pitch Netflix originally, you know, they weren't in the anime business. That, that's what I was about to they, ask you. They didn't. Uh, this wasn't a thing. I I, I didn't go in and, and say, hey. Uh, what, what were you about to ask me? Well, j- j- just like, do you feel like it has it has sort of opened the door for the anime genre at Netflix? Because maybe it's because of Castlevania that I'm paying more attention, but I see a lot more on the service I mean, than I totally. used to. They sent me to Japan to go, you know, talk to the Japanese media about it, and it's like I'm because I'm from Southeast Asia. I'm like, uh, I spend most of my life in that in that in that region, and that's why that's why I like. I, I, so, so do yeah. you think that Castlevania has sort of shown Netflix like the that the, the there's a big fan base out there for anime and they're looking for a place to find that stuff? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. But I, I don't think it's just Netflix. I think I think everyone's kind of wisening up to that to that mm-hmm. fact, right? Um, and there's a few reasons for that. I mean, the '80s, '90s uh, uh, film entertainment ecosystem, which you were a, you are a, and were a big part of, right? I mean, you were covering it. It was all driven sure. by like that star thing, right? It's his favorite thing to hear in the world. That he was a big part of it. <laughs> you were, you absolutely were. But he absolutely was, right? I mean, he was he was bringing scoops, but scoops were dri- were, were were built around well, who did you get? Like Brad Pitt was worth more than. Well, it was, the, it was so, the, the days of Ain't It Cool. It was that kind of stuff. Right. The spy yeah. reports, the early test screenings. Totally. That kind of stuff. So. Um, yeah. All right. So we got so with season two then. You're you're pumped about it. And so do we know about three yet? Or three season three, it's not locked in yet? Or if, if it will be, that's when we go to bigger budget. We don't know yet. Yeah, we don't know yet. We're in talks. That's we, don't, we don't know yet. Okay, um, that's fair. But I will say this, right? It's not... And I'm not not trying to diss anyone's anyone's programming. I'm just saying, from personal preference, sure. um, I can kind of tell when people are making it up as they go along. You know, the show they're like, "Oh, we got another mm-hmm. season. Okay, what can we do this time?" Right. Uh, right. Um, so we have this all mapped out now. It's just a question of you know how much how how many how much resources do we get to do it? How much time do we get to tell it? You say mapped out. You're talking about from se- to series finale. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We've we got, got a whole got five thing. We've got a whole thing, thing, got thing, thing uh, wept up. I mean, yeah. Do you does Netflix own the show outright, or do you own it and Whoa, license it to dude, them? Dude, that is crazy. Because that is aw- <laughs> that is an awesome question. Because Yo, here's the thing. We're noticing Netflix. I feel like I'm at canceling. AFM right now. Know, I'm right? at AFM right now. <laughs> We're noticing canceling uh, Netflix canceling these shows that they don't out- own outright, whether it's some of the Marvel shows or American Vandal. So I'm just wondering if you're like worried question. about that. I don't know if they own it outright. Do you Am think I about that kind worried of stuff? Yeah. about getting Castlevania canceled? Be- because if if Netflix doesn't own it outright, do you, are you worried that it makes it more susceptible to being canceled? 
I think in a part of that question too, Adi, if I can, is the fact that because going off of that, because of this news, nobody really. Some people saw the, uh, the what's this, the first one, Iron Fist. Iron Fist. People saw that coming. The Luke Cage one was everyone's like, Wait, whoa, they're just they're canceling that one as well. As a creator, so going off of what Jeff is saying there too, do you then say to yourself, okay, are we next? No. Okay. No, uh, because I'm privy to kind of the. I, I'm privy to what went on in the in the in that in that thing. So um, you know why Iron Fist and Luke Cage were canceled? Yes. Oh. And there is a definitive reason. I mean, it's not one reason, but right. I'm you know, but it's. Is there any chance it has anything to do with the Disney streaming, at all? B- better we don't talk about talk it. about <laughs> it because because then that will get Castlevania canceled. To answer, uh, to answer <laughs> his <laughs> first that's question, fair. or get me canceled. That's I don't fair. know. To that's answer Jeff's first question, can you answer whether they own your show straight up or not, or can you not answer that? I mean, I'd rather not. Okay. I'd no rather problem. not because no um, it puts me in weird, like explaining. Right. Well, the good news is that mode. You're, yeah. in a good, you're in a good position. That's that's where we're coming from. The, the, from where we come out of this whole thing, you're in a good position here with Netflix. Yeah, Castlevania is trending up. Those right. shows, you know, were trending down. But you're not. So like you said before, though, you're a busy dude. You do a lot of shit, and you got. So no, the other thing that you have going on here is Body. And Body is a, is a 2017 American battle rap comedy drama, and it is directed by Joseph Kahn. Yes. It was written by Alex Larson yep. and is produced by Eminem and his manager Paul Rosenberg, of course, Andy Shankar. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, first thing before we talk about bodied here, yeah. um, and uh, this is this is going to be you got to get the political answer though too. I, I assume the whole thing with Eminem and uh, Machine Gun Kelly, <laughs> right? You saw both the battles. Yeah. Who do you think won? Uh, Marshall. So I, it's uh, now because because I know how in hip hop. Why did he win the battle? Why do you think he won? Because I've always get I always get to the conversation between the two people who they won. Because I'll say this too. I go back on my original thing. Because you and I have talked about it. Originally, I thought Machine Gun Kelly won the whole thing, but I never heard Marshall's original diss. I always thought it was just some little line, but he roasts that dude the first time around. I thought his first diss was better than the than the, the second one. That's my opinion on it. I think it's it's kind of dangerous territory for Machine Gun Kelly. Yeah. And here's and here's my my logic as to why, right? Um, there, there's a similarity between two of them, right? I don't think you ever want to go after someone who, who, uh, legend, not just a legend, but a legend in the same lane that you're operating right. in right now. He's right. Your, right. He's his type. Kind exactly. Of. Like go after, I don't know, 50 cent or Ja Rule or some, anyone else. Right. So it's like across category. Right. Um, I'm trying to think of it like a film example, but it would be like, a young up and coming horror director going after John Carpenter. Right. You're not going to win that battle. Right. Right. Even if you have one good shot, right. like people are always going to remember because once the legend comes out and hits you in the mouth, he just punches you in the mouth. Nobody, uh, that's all you're going to remember him exactly. for. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Because the, you, you get bodied. I agree with that. You get uh, bodied the moment it's like, I've forgotten things that you haven't even learned yet. And like, I love the way you tied it back to your to to the, the, the film. So tell me a little bit about it. What's what's it all about? And uh we want to hear. Yeah, so it's uh it's uh and Jeff you're it's awesome you, is oh, what it is. Seen it, dude. I've seen it twice. Okay. It's okay. awesome. Okay. Um so it's about <laughs> underground battle rap culture yeah. as it exists today in a post eight mile uh world. Um but really what it is is it's a takedown slash dissection slash examina- examination of uh, PC culture, outrage culture, et cetera, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. Right? That's that's really what it is about under the hood. But on the surface, it's a battle rap film. Okay, great. And does uh, not that it matters one way or another, but does does Marshall actually show up in the film? No. Oh, okay, cool. I do. You show up in the yeah. film? Okay. What do you yeah. do in the movie? <laughs> I have a a, a a turban, a beard. Uh, I play like a, a camper security guard, but I talk like this. Okay. And it's and do you do you, do you rap? Do you? I'm just curious. If you do. I, mean, I can. You can't. I yeah. think we should do one today. I think you guys should battle Absolutely rap not. each other. Absolutely not. Absolutely <laughs> I'll not. battle rap you. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it. Um, I'd, I'd do it. Well, that's great. So the, and the movie, yeah, I was like, I'll, I'll roast you yeah. right now. Daddy. Well, listen, so here's something. Here's something. I mean, body. I'm an easy target, Jeff. Yeah. I'm an easy target. So am I. Me, me yeah. too. <laughs> you are indeed. You're I, don't, I disagree. Fall. I don't think you're an easy target. I think you're, you're just a dude. You're just a dude that that speaks the truth. 
You haven't been on social media. He is such an easy target. It's unbelievable. Yeah. All mm-hmm. right. But but body, and I love this guy. Body is, 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 is again, guys. Is, the movie premiered at the 2017 uh, Toronto International Film Festival, and it stars Caleb Worthy as Adam, who's a graduate student who becomes a competitive battle rapper after becoming immersed in the scene while working on his graduate thesis on the subject. Now, this, the movie won the Toronto, Toronto International Film Festival People's Choice Award in Midnight Madness, and won Fantastic Fest 2017's Audience Award, and in January 2018, uh, sorry, January 2018, YouTube Red announced that it acquired exclusive streaming rights with a release later in 2018. YouTube awesome. Red didn't announce it. No, announce Collider. It. Collider, Collider announced, announced it. it. All right, good. Well, Collider announced it. See, there we go. So that's that's so my humble. notes. Or the tracking board. I don't know. Whoever did. Whoever wherever did. I was. Let's well, find. Yeah, but, Jeff, uh, Jeff wrote that story. It um, yeah. like the, the the movie's great. I think Callum uh, is fantastic because mm-hmm. yeah. he's from and he's an uh, American Vandal. Um, what I'm cu- like, curious about is like the rollout with this because Neon, you know, YouTube bought it, but then Team with Neon for theatrical. Yeah. So what's the deal? It's coming out in theaters November second. When are YouTube folks going to get to see? It? Oh yeah. Uh, end of end of November. End of November. Yeah. Okay, cool. Because like, has YouTube done this sort of thing before? This no. is really like a first. This is yeah, like a so big test is, case. Yeah, it's a big test case. Yeah. Well, well, there we go. So all right. So what else? What else we got going on here? Honestly. So, um, we have. I, I, so, all oh right. You had, well, you had mentioned to me that there may be some movement on this other uh, cool project that you're developing. I've been following it for years. I saw the devil, which is a. Re- I made them actually watch the trailer yeah, last yeah. week because I like this is one of the great like revenge movies. So, is there something going? Is there anything new on that front? You're gonna get me into trouble. Ah. Uh... But yeah. You're already in trouble. You're already all over the the news this weekend with I the Abu stuff. I know. I know. I know. All right. So, but yeah, you said there and, is some... and it's picking up again. Yes. Yeah. Because oh. Al like. There was like, uh, a, did you see this? I've, I've seen a lot. Al Jean, what he what happened? No. He's the showrunner of right, Simpsons, no. right? Oh, no, no, no. I, I think I did see something. What yes. happened? What happened? If it's out there, you can tell. Well, I mean, one. yeah, he wrote a he wrote a, a, a thing saying, you know, Adi Shankar's not a, a, a producer on The Simpsons. Right, okay. And he doesn't speak for... Right, but you were just saying that you had sources who were saying, like, you know, you right. were talking and then on someone else, and then someone else uh, uh, said that okay, to so him, he, to Al. So this is Entertainment Weekly who says producer Adi Shankar has found the perfect script to solve the Simpsons. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And that was all. That was all fine and good. Okay. So then, so then someone else responded to Al and said, uh, Adi never said he was a producer on the Simpsons, and he go, he responds, Yeah, I know. I'm I'm referencing this one article. It's this site I'd never heard of. It. It's called NME. Mm-hmm. N for exactly uh, N for huh. no source. M for management sucks, and E for everyone. Education needed. Right, right. Um, <laughs> like they they printed this false article. Like whoever wrote it just didn't. They they called. They said Simpsons producer says all this stuff, right. Right. and he was literally just saying this is this is a false story. So he's not really addressing the issue. He's picking this one fake news story. Okay. When I find out that Enemy is actually like a a yeah, they're Somewhat, big. they're yeah. a big site, yeah. so I'm yeah. just kind of like WTF. And then this morning I wake up and like now BBC and uh, like the Sun, they're picking up this this story as a as Zip a fact. Simpsons means a lot to a lot of people, yeah. right? But they're 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 quoting. It's just weird. It's right. weird. It's, it's, it's like it's a game of telephone. I've right. seen it happen. Yeah, it's a false narrative now that's taking hold, and right. I'm like, I don't know what's going on. What would you that's do why then? you're here to correct yeah. the record. That's one of the things, so too, because I feel like, in a way, and, I, and, and do not don't take offense to this. What I say, I feel like you're out. <laughs> no, I feel like you're you're out there. You you're out. You're always there fighting a fight and fighting a good fight and fighting like I think that you're a creative, dude. We know that. We know that production, the things that you've done in the past, things that you're doing now, currently. But I do feel like you like to get out there and take the gloves off and and and, and scrap. Um, and and it's not you know and it's no certain absolutely. Ways. Um, and, so. I used to be. I used to be that way. I'm not that way anymore. Right. I'm right. literally not that way. Just pulling you back in by accident right, with this this thing. No, 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 no. This is where it's getting misinterpreted. Okay. This was an olive branch, right? Like, right. Um, I looked at it as a as a as a as as a problem. I said, you know, there's The Simpsons, which is this international show. Yeah, this character about who affected me negatively. Mm-hmm. And then at the same time, there was, you know, there was all this outrage over the Apu problem, and, and they didn't really know how to address it. They didn't know how to um, uh, deal with it, yeah. and anything they were doing was deemed wrong, mm-hmm. and people were mad at them, right? And I thought, well, okay, well, why don't we do this? Why don't I just 
crowdsource a solution. Why don't I create a screenwriting contest, mm -hmm. make it free for everyone to enter. I'll, you know, get readers and everything. I'll make it like the, you know, a panel of, of Indian Americans can uh, in, in, in entertainment can be the, the judges and we'll find acceptable scripts and we'll just kind of show it to them and be like, look, here, this takes the onus off you. Right. I was doing it to help. Right. I wasn't trying to like start a thing. It then turned into something else, right? And all I was doing last week, all I was doing last week was I announced the winner of the contest. Yeah, okay. I just announced the winner of the contest and it just it turned gets, into this I thing, see. All right? right? Let's whip back. But I see. but what what happens what's happening with this thing that's 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 upsetting to me, right? Is um is the whole like political correctness thing, right? So it's like, oh, you politically correct millennials, you're ruining comedy, right? I'm like, I I'm, I'm not for or against political correctness. This has nothing to do with political correctness. This has everything to do with, uh, I'm trying to just present a solution. I'm trying to move this narrative forward because my fundamental belief here is we're dealing with like some pretty fucking catastrophic problems that are about to hit society. And they're coming from tech companies, and they're coming from the disruption they're about to cause. Mm -hmm. Right? We're being siloed off into these little tribes, and these tribes benefit um, the, the, the market of the future because it basically carves us up into a, into a car carves everyone up into this tiny niche that you can sell products to. Right. And that is, that is happening, and it's dividing the planet. And if we can't come together over something as small as a cartoon character, how the fuck are we supposed to deal with the big shit when it's about to come? That was my philosophy. Right. That's what I was trying to trying to do, and that's what I'm still trying to do. But they took do. it as someone who was trying to kind of they, they have a very similar what you're just talking about. They have their protective shield. They have their part of their their own cliche or not cliche, a little uh, pocket. The 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 Simpsons is, and they're saying this guy's not a producer on the show. He can't make calls like like that. And where you're just saying, well, I want to make more of a solution to this problem. I, I, and I, I don't even blame the Simpsons, right? Yeah. Uh, I don't I don't have a problem with with anyone. I'm just trying to, but just to you know give you an example of of what, like I'm, <laughs> yeah. it's not Bless loading you. here, but. Thank um, you. Yeah, I don't necessarily have a problem with, with, with anybody. I'm literally just a guy trying to present solutions. Right. Right? Because um, – so, so I guess the question is because I, I know um, – is, is the problem the media reporting on you trying to like like – Offer those solutions? Yes. Like they're taking everything out of yes. context? Yeah. Yes. That's what it, I gather too. It's like – I mean, it's like the Daily uh, uh, Ben Shapiro site and Breitbart. Yeah. Right? They're literally spinning one narrative. Right. The others are spinning one other narrative. And I'm like, dude, dude, I'm not part of this narrative. Okay? I'm not part of this fucking narrative. Right. What, I'm, what I am a part of is, is, is the we need to stop fighting narrative. Right. Did you not see it coming at all? What? That there would be backlash for your competition? That's a good question. When the, if, did it ever actually seep in that this could? Like, I, I, we know that you from just from hearing you that this is something that you wanted to do, but did it ever push back that they could get pissed off about it? No. Okay. No, um, because and this is this is maybe just me being super naive, right? Like, I mean, you can even see what Al Jean tweeted, right? He said, yeah. "Adi Shankar is not a producer on The Simpsons. I wish him the very best, but he does not speak for our show." Right? right. So he's not actually addressing the issue at hand. Right. He's just really collect correcting. Yeah, he's letting people right? know about the contest that it has. This was to do this was something. literally last night, right. and I responded, "I wish you well too. Let's work towards common ground, ignoring only fans to flames. The world is polarized, getting more so, and the onus is on us to bring people together, engage in a constructive way, and this matter will go to bed." I see you. Now I'm asking you to see me. It's fair. It's fair like, response. Yeah. I, I, like, what is political about that? Right. Right. I'm I mean, literally just well, very well said. Can, it is well said. You can, you can say. I think that anything can be constructed as, as political. I mean, I think that there are certainly, especially where what we're diving into this overall conversation of the, the the competition alone is is political. But I think that there's a, there's a side to it that I think I think your side is right, and from what you're asking him is I think is fair, and, and I think it's a balanced conversation in general. I'm just saying we need to have a dialogue. Yeah, that's all. Yeah. I'm just saying there should be a dialogue, right? Yeah. Um, because look. I've had this theory for years on on, on, on us as a species. Mm -hmm. um, the information age was very great for humanity, right? We started – it really hypercharged this, this new uh, interconnectivity we had. It took globalism and just kind of uh, 
turn the volume up on it. And it's all, it's all good. It gives the average person uh, on their cell phone access to more information than, uh, than the president had 40 years ago. Right. Also gives right? everyone a voice. Yeah, and that's right. all fine. That's all fine and good. Yeah. That's all fine and good. But we then reach critical mass. There's too much information. How do you process too much information? Because the human mind is not designed to handle so many, so many narratives. And then we've been, you know, we are the, the, the human brain pre-augmentation. We will eventually be augmented. We will eventually augment our eyes and our brains and our ears. And the, the human experience will fundamentally shift as a byproduct of gene splicing and, 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 and uh, tech augmentations. But until we get to that point, we need to get to another point and move away from the information age. So the next age is the age of understanding. Yeah. I, well I like said. That. And with I like that, that. The, uh, and Adi I Shankar. talked about this in 2013. Yeah, I said the age of understanding has to come because if it doesn't, everything will there'll be a seismic collapse. Yeah, I think a lot of people have share share your the point of view. The age of, of understanding. Yeah, the age of understanding. So when I make a video and Kanye shoots this video, mm. and all I'm saying in this video is, I moved to America and I was too afraid to talk like this because I thought everyone would just say thank you, come again to me. That's just me trying to make people understand. Mm -hmm. Look, this is the other side of the issue. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm not trying to like impose my will on anybody. But, not but, and, this is just my point of view. Yeah. And here's a solution I have. If someone has a better solution, go for it. But that's it. Yeah. Uh, and I thank you for sharing your point of view here today. Um, like I said, you never wanted to shy away from the way that you feel, and I appreciate you doing that here on Collider Live. Uh, Castlevania season three, season two, excuse me, is um, that's wishful thinking. Uh, season two is <laughs> on Netflix now. You also uh, bodied that we're gonna be able to check out in November. Thank you for visiting us. Please come back and, and see us again. And let's uh, let's keep talking some some stuff, man. Because this is a lot of fun. I love having you on. It's a good dude. This is great. Cool. I love you guys.